Hello. Well, it's Thursday here in snowy Talmadge, Ohio, and that means it's time for another Digital Dorsey. My name is Ken Dorsey. My call sign is Kilo Alpha 8 Oscar Alpha Delta. And uh, a few weeks back in one of my shows, I mentioned that I was using a Raspberry Pi with an SDR radio to do remote receive off the Raspberry Pi with the SDR. I had a lot of people inquire about, okay, how is that actually done and can you demonstrate it for us? So today we're going to show you the ins and outs of actually doing that. Uh, as usual, I have my battery pack powering my Raspberry Pi. It's a Model 4. I have the Raspberry Pi connected with USB to our uh, SDR receiver here. This is called the DX Patrol. We actually sell this SDR receiver here at DX Engineering. The nice thing I like about this SDR is it gives you VHF and HF output, so you can use it uh, either way. Now, right now, I have two adapter cables that just go to SO239s to the, uh, the, the SMA mail connectors so that I can actually connect antennas to the, the device. But uh, the, on the VHF side, it'll do from 28 megahertz to 2 gigahertz. On the HF side, it will do 0.5 megahertz to up to about uh, 30 megahertz. So you'll get all your HF on the HF side. Right now, I'm connected to the VHF side, and I am actually running GQRX on the Raspberry Pi. And we're listening right now to our local weather service station. Uh, and I will warn you, it may be a little choppy at times because I'm actually running off of a very, very slow uh, 2.4 gig Wi-Fi network. So my throughput is very low and I'm trying to push a lot of data through a very small pipe. So it does break up a little bit, but usually when I'm in the shack at home, I'll usually have the uh, computer direct connected to the network and the Raspberry Pi direct connected through an Ethernet port. So I go right directly to Ethernet, which ob ob obviously uh, speeds things up and uh, makes things work much better. But really, as you can see, we actually have pretty good, uh, even off of just a slow Wi-Fi connection, we have a pretty decent uh, uh, throughput on it. Um, I'm gonna switch over to one of our talk radio stations here. Well, let's go to WKSU. I'll have to turn up volume a little bit on them. So there you go. That's uh, WKSU radio station, Kent State University station here in the local area. Uh, here's one of our other talk radio stations. In your other job. Because you work two jobs, all right? Yeah. And you've yeah. done that for almost 20 years. So, uh, once again, so you know, actually good pretty let's good let's throughput, go, even though we're running I'll off of say, a, a very uh, slow Wi-Fi connection. Now, um, I'm going to stop this for a second. And you're going to say, okay, Ken, that's neat, but you're on VHF and, uh, you know, 28 megahertz up uh, to, to 2 gig or whatever. I'm more interested in HF, so how do I go about getting HF? Well, it's actually, on GQRX, it's actually very easy. You go over to the, the settings, at least it's easy on this SDR. Um, we'll bring up the settings, and we just need to add, this SDR does direct, has direct sound, or direct uh, support. Okay, direct, yeah, direct SAMP. So D-I-R-E-C-T underscore S-A-M-P equals two. Okay, so this is actually gonna turn on the direct sampling on the radio. So we're gonna go to direct samp equals two. We're gonna go ahead and okay that. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to change the antenna over to the uh, HF side of this SDR. We'll just pull the BHF piece and connect it up to the HF side. Okay, now we will uh, go over to, we'll just do FT8 on 40 meters. That's pretty easy to, uh, to, to know that for a fact that there's actually some traffic out there. So let me bring that up. I'm gonna shut this down again and turn it back on. Sometimes it doesn't always pick up the direct sampling the first time around. 
I may actually have to shut down GQRX for a minute. Let me just do that. Okay. Ooh. And there we go. So now we're on HF and listening to some FT8 on HF and obviously I can go around the HF band here see if I can catch someone else I don't have this I don't have the squelch turned on so obviously we're getting a lot of uh, noise but uh, but anyway so there you go there's uh, HF on the SDR Let me turn this back down HF on the SDR remotely running off the Raspberry Pi so how do we do this I'm going to give you the secret sauce here so you have an idea of what you have to do to accomplish this. Uh, and I'll probably do a write-up on this as well and put it up, uh, post it up on our website someplace, probably somewhere with the uh, SDR receiver. But there's a couple of things you had to do. So first of all, I, I wanted to try to figure out what is a good remote control program to use that will support audio. So you have a UV4L out there, you have um, um, a, different, uh, a bunch of different uh, remote software, the RDP stuff, you have the uh, VNC remote software, all that software is great remote software, but most of it doesn't support audio. And that's you know, the rub. So what we had to do is, I'm gonna shut down my connection here so I can show you what's going on in the background. So we have this background app running that's basically running the Pulse Audio over the network. So we're running a separate uh, Pulse Audio stream Why we are actually bringing up RDP. Now, to do that, I found a, uh, a gentleman that had a, a lot of information about this. Very good, very, very good information. And his website, was called Scary Gliders, and it's uh, HTTPS for a uh, backslash backslash forward slash forward slash excuse me scarygliders.net, uh, uh, and then uh, I'll 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 have this link. We'll post this link on the page so you can find this link. If you scroll down about halfway down this website, you'll find some information about how to set up a Windows client to use RDP with audio. So the first thing you have to do on your Windows client is you need to go to this website, this uh, free desktop website. You go to this website and, you're, and, and on this site, and this is taking forever. Like I said, it's a slow uh, Wi-Fi connection. Uh, but anyway, that link will allow you to download a zip file. You want to unpack that zip file into a folder. Now I just use Pulse Audio. Uh, that's the folder that he recommends on the on the site. And there we go. So so you go down to this link here, zip file containing preview bi binaries. You're going to click on that link to download that zip file. Then unpack the zip file. And once you have the zip file unpacked, Then you will, uh, like I said, I unpacked it into a, uh, a folder called uh, Pulse Audio. So I'll just let you see the Pulse Audio folder here. Give me one second. Uh, Pulse Audio. Okay, there's the Pulse Audio folder. So you're going to have four folders in there. You're going to have a bin, a binary folder, and some library folders. You want to do the Pulse Audio. You're going to Pulse Audio etc pulse default.pa. And you're going to locate the model module 
So you want to go into ECT, Pulse, and the default PA. Now you'll have to open these files with an editor that will handle uh, the carriage return line feeds for uh, Linux or Unix. So I use Notepad++, that's a pretty good uh, editor to use. And you're going to find the line that says load module null sync. So let me scroll down here. I'm trying to scroll and hold this laptop at the same time. Okay, so you're going to find this line that says null module load, load, load module module null sync. Below that line, you're going to add this line, load-module, module-native-protocol-tcp, listen 000, auth anonymous equal 1. And what that does, uh, and again, this is all uh, found, you can find this information on that website. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow your uh, Pulse Audio server that's running on the client machine to accept connections from anywhere on your LAN. So you're going to do that, you're going to make that change, and you're going to save that file. Okay, once that file is, is done, then you're going to, so you're going to open the uh, Pulse Audio Etsy, and go back here, Pulse daemon.conf. So you're going to open the daemon.conf file. And again, we'll just open that with Notepad++. And in this file, you want to add, at the very end of the file, you want to add one line that says exit-idle-time equals minus one. And what that will do is that will keep the Pulse Audio daemon from, daemon from shutting down. So it'll keep the Pulse Audio daemon running. Uh, if you don't put that in, it automatically shuts down after 20 minutes. Okay, so once you've done that, then you just have to go to the Pulse Audio bin directory. You're going to go to bin and now you want to do this in, in a command prompt. So you're going to bring up a command prompt window, go to pulse audio bin and then once you're in pulse audio bin you're going to run um, a line and let me just bring, I'm going to close this. What I did is I created, to make this easy on myself, I created a batch file. So it's going to go, you're going to go to Pulse Audio bin, then you're going to run this command, pulseaudioexe p uh, colon c colon pulse audio lib pulse modules, all, all of that, that whole line of information there, okay? And like I said, I created a Pulse Audio, this batch file for Pulse Audio to do that. So when I want to start it, I just click the batch file, it automatically starts. Now the first time you run this command, you're going to get a, a warning, a firewall warning from Windows. Just go ahead and say uh, accept the firewall warning um, because you, you know, obviously you want to be able to have the Pulse Audio stuff get to your device. So that's all you have to do on the PC side. You get that, start that daemon running and you can just minimize that window. Now on the Raspberry Pi side, I'm going to just, I'm going to just go to, uh, putty and we'll bring up the, the uh, commands prompt on the Raspberry Pi. So on the Raspberry Pi side what you want to do is you want to go to the you want to go to the ETC pulse directory. So you're going to change the directory to ETC pulse and then you're going to actually edit the client.conf file. So if I do a, a, an ls, if I show the directory, the, the files in, the, in that folder, you'll see this client.conf. So we're going to edit that client.conf. I like to use nano as the editor. And about right after the comments, you're going to see this line that says default server. Now that line's going to be uh, um, removed from the, the file. It's going to have a little semicolon in front of it. It's going to look something like that and it's not going to have all the information. So you'll want to take and actually set that line up so that it's going to actually call that line. And then you're going to put in the address, the IP address of your computer. Not the Raspberry Pi, but the IP address of the computer that you're using 
for the audio and do a colon 4713 after that for the so you're going to have the IP address and, and then colon 4713 and that's all the setup you need to do on the Raspberry Pi oops let me not uh, let me close this before I close the window no okay so now I have the I have the client running. I have the uh, Pulse Audio running on the laptop. I can go back to Remote Desktop, and then the ro Remote Desktop uh, bring just bring up Remote Desktop and hit Connect, and you're going to connect back up to the Pi. Now, um, also, this brings up another uh, couple of items. Make sure that you actually have Pulse Audio loaded on the Pi, and also make sure that you load the, uh, the RDP, the XRDP files on the Raspberry Pi. So to load XRDP on the Pi, you just do a sudo space apt space install space XRDP, and that'll load the XRDP software on the, on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and of course, then uh, you make sure you have the Pulse Audio loaded as well. So we're going to bring the connection back up on the Pi again here. Uh, you'll also, of course, need to load GQRX. So you can go out to uh, the Preferences, and you can do an Add Remove Software search for GQRX. and it will search and find GQRX. Now, obviously, I already have it loaded, so I'm not going to reload it, but it should eventually here come up with uh, the package GQRX. There it is, and you can see I've already loaded it on the system, so I don't have to, I'm not gonna reload it. Uh, once GQRX is loaded, then go ahead and launch GQRX. And the first time you run GQRX, it is going to ask you for the uh, information for your, um, your SDR receiver, what SDR receiver you're using. Uh, this happens to be just an RTL82 uh, receiver, so that's what I have it set up for. Is the, uh, If I go back into the settings here, I have it just set up for a uh, standard RTL device. And that's a, a Realtek RTL 2838 UHDI device. Okay. Also, you want to set, while you're there in the configuration, you need to set your output, your audio output, to Microsoft Wave Out on Microsoft Sound Mapper. So make sure that Wave Out output on Microsoft Sound Mapper is loaded. Um, and you're done. That is your configuration information. We can come back in. We'll go back to the weather channel here again because I have the radio set back up. Oh, I'm not. Don't have my antenna plugged in, so I'm not going to receive anything. But that's it. Uh, again, I will try to get this information documented to make it a little easier to be able to hopefully follow what I did here. But um, just just for interest, um, I mean, this is how you do it. So that's a, a demo of how that can be done, running a Raspberry Pi SDR remotely to a PC. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have questions, you can contact us at dxengineering at dxengineering.com or digitaldorsey at dxengineering.com. And I would love to be able to help you out and answer your questions. Until next week, 73.